Question of the night, can you detox from meat glue? Do you need to detox from meat glue? But before we even go into that, let's kind of ask the question, what is meat glue? Now, what you're looking at here in this diagram is very much what meat glue looks like. It comes, uh, industrially speaking, you can actually purchase it. You could go online and you can buy this. Now this otherwise known as microbial transglutaminase. That's its technical name. Okay, microbial transglutaminase. Now there are different kinds. So the one of them is, is microbial transglutaminase. And this is actually derived, it's bacterial derived, so it's derived from bacteria. And then there's another kind of meat glue that's derived from the serum or, or blood, if you will, uh, typically of, of pig or cow. So porcine or bovine blood product. And so what they do with this is they dry it out and it forms a powder as you can see here, and then they take this powder and they sprinkle it onto tiny bits of meat. So imagine you've got a bunch of meat bits and uh, or meat cubes, right? And so you sprinkle this powder onto those meat cubes and then you, you compress them together, you wrap them together and you mold them into a particular shape. Okay, that's, typically that's why I call it meat glue because it glues meat together. What this stuff does, it's an enzyme that connects, it, it creates bonds between the proteins in the meat so that it glues them together. So again, most meat glue today in the industry is this stuff right here, microbial transglutaminase, although uh, this particular, so for, for example, if you're in the EU, if you're in the European Union, this stuff here is banned. You, you, you won't find it in your food, but you might find this in your food. So again, it's banned in the EU, the bovine porcine derivative, and partly because of the risk of contamination of bacteria. So they banned it there for safety purposes, but this stuff is not. This again is from a bacteria and it glues meat together. Now it doesn't just glue meat together. If we look at other things that it can be found in, okay, so all your potential sources of meat glue here. So meat obviously, so you might go to a restaurant, right? I, this is one of the reasons why you may have heard me say from time to time, eat where there's a chef, don't eat where there's a cook. And, and this, is, this is my policy on eating out. I generally won't eat where there's a cook, and that's no offense to cooks, but generally, as a rule of thumb, the chef owns the restaurant um, or owns the facility And because they own the facility, they take pride in what they produce, so there's a higher quality, right? And so they're gonna use real meat, they're gonna make you a steak. If they're gonna make you a ribeye, they're gonna produce you a steak, it's gonna be a steak. Where, when there's a place where there's a cook, this is usually corporate owned. So it's usually like your chains, uh, your chain restaurants. And there, a lot of the motto for these corporate owned places is the taste has to be the same, no matter where you are. So if you're eating, for example, at one restaurant, chain restaurant in California, it has the same taste, the same flavors, the same consistency, the same texture, the same predictability as if you're eating at that same restaurant in New York. And the only way they can accomplish this is with enzymes and food additives and, and, and preservatives and other things. And so that's very, very common that where there's a cook, where there's a chain, right? You get your steak, you might order it and think you're getting a steak, think you're getting a real steak, but what you might be getting is bits of meat that are glued together. Chicken nuggets, hot dogs, sausages, deli meats, as well as boneless wings. Those of you who like the wing places. And then if you like the delis, the roast beef, the turkey roast, the gyro meats, like all these can be pasted together and, and reconstituted meat product, right? It is glued together with this industrial enzyme that's used as a food additive. And by the way, meat glue does not have to be listed on the label. That's the scary part about it. So if you're flipping over and you're trying to read the ingredients just to make sure you're not getting exposure to meat glue, the problem with that is 
they don't have to list it on the label. And so this is another, just another reason for me personally why I don't like to eat out because I don't like to run the risk of this. And we're going to get to those risks here in just a minute, so stick with me. Now, meat glue can also be found to glue uh, or improve texture in dairy products. So you may be thinking, well, I'm a vegetarian or I'm, I'm a, you know, a lacto-vegetarian or whatever it is. You're not safe because we also have meat glue in things like yogurt and ice cream, uh, in a number of variety of different creams, cheeses, frozen desserts, and dressings, common places we find meat glue. And then also processed foods, even your vegetarian processed foods, so your baked goods, your pastas, cereals, tofu, especially, and this is where I want to really highlight it here today. Let's make that more legible. Let's darken it up for you. So processed gluten-free food is a big one. And I'm going to show you why in just a minute. So if you've been diagnosed with gluten sensitivity or celiac disease or non-celiac gluten sensitivity, pay very close attention as we, as we talk about this tonight. Now, in addition, you can find it in a lot of your seafood. So if you like the sushi bars, for example, the crab meat and some of the fish are actually, you know, constitu the constituent of that is, is imitation, so it's glued together. Your fish sticks are glued together. Sashimi and crab cakes glued together. Where you're, again, aside from just buying these things in the store, right, you can also, at restaurants, you get like the meat combination platters. So like when they wrap that bacon around that sirloin, right, a lot of times they adhere that bacon to that steak. They stick it to the steak using meat glue. So this is where you get like bacon wrap fillets or meat combinations. Again, turkey breast, chicken breast. Um, if, if it tastes like a hot dog, kind of the general rule of thumb is if the chicken breast or the meat on the plate tastes more like a hot dog than the actual meat, then it's probably meat glue and you're probably getting hammered. And so spit it out. If it tastes like a hot dog, spit it out. Uh, unless you're actually trying to eat a hot dog, in which case, good luck to you. But I, I don't, I'm not a really big fan of hot dogs either. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.